Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Built By Me. This morning we're going to do a little bit of a clean up. I'm going to take that rear hatch off and start to work on the brake lines. And we'll see if we get any more time to do anything else. Enjoy. Okay, so I haven't actually done a clean out of this interior yet because there's just so much rust falling off of it, I just figured whatever. But I'm going to just do a bit of a clean up because I've got to get in here and get the hatch. Hatch bolts anyway, I'll just clear it up, make it look nice. This little necklace and this little necklace Sheena maybe a name for the car I don't know spare change to uh, go towards the restoration. Now isn't that better? Makes me, me feel a bit better. I actually found some rust. I thought my wheel well at the back was free of rust, but it appears that it is not. So yeah, add that to the list of rust. That just fell on me. Um, luckily, I was not injured and nothing was damaged. So don't do it like I did it. Oh, that did not go how I thought it was going to go. And that hatch is a lot heavier than it looks. I guess because you got the glass in it. Oh my god. My plan was to loosen them off till they're right at the very end, loosen everything off, and then support it, and then start taping bolts out. <laughs> but obviously, I, uh, yeah, I think I took one too many bolts out and loosened one too many threads. And the whole thing came crashing down. Luckily, I didn't damage anything. Uh, you know, I scratched up the paint and stuff, but that's not a big deal. Yeah. Didn't damage anything too badly. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> that's how not to take the hatch out of 240Z. Don't do it like that. And so, here I'm just removing the rear hatch strut the rubber that goes around the um, hatch opening and uh, I'm removing the cushions for the rear hatch 
and also the uh, rubber seals that sit within the hole that the hatch hinges sit in. So, I didn't actually know this, but there's this little, so there's this rubber sort of insert that goes into the hatch hole, sits in there like that, obviously keeps water out. And then on top of that, they've got a plate that sits on top of the rubber. And then your hatch hinge goes in. So yeah, just thought, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that that's what was in there. So yeah, that's what it looks like when it comes out. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the brackets that hold the hard lines in place and I'm going to start taking off the hard lines for the brakes. Um, I'm going to start removing them off of the brake proportioning valve and then carry on with the uh, master cylinder. Um, most of these uh, screws are really quite rusted in. Um, I had to use the grub vice grips to, to break the break them free and um, basically ruin them but they're all just going to get replaced anyway so it's not a big deal. Um, I made sure to label all of them so that I know what shapes the new ones need to be bent to uh, when I come to replace them. I was going to tackle the underbody brake lines and fuel lines, but um, the handbrake stuff's actually in the way, so I'm going to tackle that first. If I get through that, then I'll have a crack at the underbody fuel lines. So guys, that's uh, all the time I've got left today. We actually got a fair bit done. There's not really much left on the car to strip. There's only maybe two, two more days of this to go. So we got a heat done and um, we haven't got long to go till it's finally a shell. Oh, I can't wait to actually do something other than strip shit. But um, thank you for watching. Um, if you want to follow along, just subscribe. And um, I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.